Senate Bill 58 by Senator Weiner and others and actually the alcoholic beverages. Mr. Santiago. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to present SB uh, 58, a five-year pilot program to extend uh, closing hours. Uh, if a city applies to participate, it's a pilot program. The task force would be comprised of local CHP and must create a, that must create a, a public safety plan. Even when that happens, the application must be submitted to the Department of Alcohol Beverage Control and it can be approved or denied. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for allowing me to present. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Mr. Lackey, you are recognized. Okay, I know it's almost midnight. This is really uh, this is a very important bill, folks, and uh, it's my turn to speak, man. Let me just say that my personal experience uniquely qualifies me to speak to this issue. Because not only have I dealt with traffic safety, I've worked these hours in question for over two decades. And let me just tell you a really quick story and I'll try to make it quick. When I was 19 years old, I woke up in the middle of the desert with a broken pelvis and a truck driver holding my hand. And I couldn't see because blood had caked across my face. Make a long story short, I had to learn how to walk again because the driver fell asleep. During these hours, fatigue is immense and it gets exponentially worse as the time ticks away. Now, we are also, we, we, this bill considers extending the time that we're not only going to be dealing with fatigue, but alcohol impairment. Here's another issue that I'm, I need to, I feel responsible to, to share with you reality. Throw the politics out, because this is not a, a right or a left issue. This is a right or wrong issue. And let me just tell you, death will come because of this policy, additional death. That's wrong. I don't talk about local control. I don't care who's in charge of policy that is going to facilitate needless death. Folks, I've sat in the, in the homes of people to share the absolute worst news. People have lost loved ones because people were impaired. Alcohol is an impairing substance and people will choose to drive impaired. And when we extend that, just so there's some kind of, I don't know what kind of gain you trade for life. I really don't. I don't think there's any. This is policy that is so alarming to me that it's come this far. I mean, I really don't understand the justification here because we're talking about loss of life and it's inarguable that this policy will result the policy will is going to add to death tragic death unnecessary death i just as you push that green button because i know too many of you will i just want to stand as a witness to you that it's going to send some people to their grave how you reconcile that i'll never know but thank you for your time, because I'm done before midnight. Thank you, Mr. Lackey. Mr. Frazier, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen us try to add additional CHP officers in the last session. You all unanimously voted for adding 480 officers over four years, which was vetoed last year by the governor. We are down 1,000 CHP officers 
in the state of California. Most of our cities are constrained for police enforcement. They're going out and trying to do sales tax measures and all kinds of things to be able to create more officers to provide public safety. Why are we going to put more laws on the books to allow a larger burden on public safety until we fix the matter of the problem first? I lost a daughter in a car accident. And thanks to the first responders, the highway patrol, my little girl lived. We're understaffed, undermanned, and we cannot continue to add a burden to public safety. I ask for your no vote. Mr. Cooper. I'll, I'll be quick. If you think about it in the hearing on this bill, every hearing, CHP never opposed it. Why did CHP never testify at the hearing? Who does CHP work for? That's a big question. They never testified. The association never opposed the bill. And fundamentally, they both opposed the bill, the CHP administration and the rank and file, their association. There's a reason for that. And that's where the biggest thing, it's a big issue. People do drive drunk. They do silly things right now. It not, has not gone down. They talk about the money as far as funding and locals can get together and do that. It doesn't pay for CHP. So Sacramento, fifth largest county in California right now, graveyard, there are two two-man units south of the river and one sergeant, two two-man units north of the river and one sergeant. You get an accident, you come to jail and book someone, you're off the streets. That's why it's on Graveyard, because Graveyard, most folks are asleep, except for people going out and, you know, doing silly things. So your staffing is low. Even for the police department downtown, it's low staffing because Graveyard's your slowest shift. So it's very easy to get tied up on a crash, on an arrest, you're off the street for two hours, and later on in the morning, as it gets later, officers are trying to finish their reports before they go into watch, because on Graveyard, getting off at six or seven, so they've got to finish their reports. So they're not out there hunting for drunk drivers at some point because they don't want them having overtime. And my colleague from Oakley has tried to get CHP additional funding for many, many years, and each year they're turned down. So CHP patrols are free, but for Sacramento on the freeways at nighttime, you have a total to think about that, a total of 10 officers. That's not very many officers. And in the Bay Area, the same thing, LA County, the same thing, if you're driving on a freeway. So just something to think about it. It sounds good, but at what cost to think about it? You go over the jail right now, even on a Friday night, a lot of folks are getting booked for drunk driving. And that's a laborious process. You go down there, the talk sliders, they got a blow on it, fill out paperwork, take their property, have the nurse examine them. So it's a very lengthy process. So just something to think about. So I urge your no vote. Mr. Mays, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, colleagues, I rise in support of this bill. Uh, but not because I don't uh, agree with uh, my, my colleagues who have spoken in opposition uh, to this bill because I think that they are uh, right. But California is in an incredibly diverse state. Uh, there are over, was our 400, more than 400 cities. There are 58 counties. And every single one of those communities is different. I'll tell you, I don't think three o'clock is the right number. I don't think two o'clock is the right number. It started off at four o'clock. I think that our local communities are the ones that should be able to decide what that uh, what, what that hour is. And if you believe that government is best, that which governs closest to the people, then why not give our local communities the ability to be able to make this decision? For that reason, I'll be supporting this measure this evening, and I urge your support as well. Ms. Carrillo, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of SB 58. Late night closing times have been examined in all 50 states and have been compared to the DUI statistics provided from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And there is absolutely no correlation between states with later closing times and higher rates of drunk driving. In fact, one study done by the American Journal of Preventative Medicine echoed this, finding evidence that shows extending drinking hours by up to two hours does not affect excessive alcohol consumption or increase alcohol-related harms. It is also important to highlight this bill's strict local control, as no city will be able to implement this extending closing hour without the city council first voting to approve the ordinance and developing and approving a local plan 
showing that public necessity and convenience will be served. Next, the city must convene a public safety task force compromised of local law enforcement and CHP officials to develop a public safety plan of actions to keep their community safe. This is incredibly important to my community of the city of Los Angeles. This plan must also exhibit resident and business support and show that transportation services are readily accessible before it is even submitted to the state for approval. Essentially, SB 58 requires localities to go through numerous protection measures to ensure the entire city is as prepared as possible for this change. It is time that we re-examine our statewide closing hours and give local governments the flexibility to determine what is best for our communities. I respectfully request and I vote. Thank you, Ms. Creo. Ms. Melendez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, I think this, the speakers before me who are opposed to this made some very good points. I think there are a few that we want to add to this. Number one, Governor Brown did veto this bill already, and for very good reason. I would urge you to go back and look at his veto message. Number two, the LA City Council um, is against this measure, unanimously, I believe. The third point that I would like to make to you is um, I want to appeal to the parents in this room. You know, this is a younger legislature now. We have a lot more people who have young children at home. So it's possible that your young children are going to play sports like mine do. And my children, when their sports league starts, they're at practice at five in the morning which means they're on the road at 4.30 in the morning to go to practice. To suggest that this is a localized issue because the people who are staying out later and drinking will only stay in that local area to drive home is a false assumption. They're going to go into other communities. And do you want to put your children and everyone else's children at risk by having more people who've had too much to drink on the road who could possibly take the lives of your babies, your children. You need to think very carefully about, is it worth it to allow a few more hours of drinking? Is it worth it to put children at risk? I urge no vote. Mr. Obernolte. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am not a particular fan of bars, and those of you who know me know I'm probably amongst the least likely to be found at a bar at 3 o'clock in the morning. However, I am a fan also of local control. Like most of you, I served in local government. I was the mayor of a city, and I remember vividly how frustrating it was to be told by people in Sacramento what was right and what was wrong for my community. And that's why I'll be supporting this bill today. And I think it's important to note that this is not a statewide law. This is a narrowly targeted pilot program. Our local governments are supposed to be the crucible of experimentation in government. And this is a way of finding out whether or not some of the objections that have been raised here tonight are true. These communities have already expressed a willingness to be part of the pilot program. They have already uh, decided at the city council level that this is good for their communities, and they will have to comply with a pages long list of public safety requirements, public hearings, uh, and engagement with their communities before they are allowed to join. So I think that we are taking a balanced approach here. Uh, I think that we should let our local governments do what's best for their communities. And then when this pilot program has run its course, Several years from now, we can look at the statistics and find out whether or not this was a reasonable power to give them. And I suspect the answer will be yes, but if the answer is no, then we should terminate the pilot program. But because I'm a believer in local government, I urge and I vote. Mr. Marasucci. I just want to highlight the, the irony that uh, we have... Uh, so many people from both sides of the aisle talking about local control. When we voted on so many bills today, 
to take away local control, you know, to build more housing. And yet here we're talking about local control so that we can sell, give, or purchase alcohol between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. I believe 3 a.m. 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. I stand corrected. I I haven't seen those statistics that uh, our, uh, our colleague from East LA cited, but I have a hard time believing those statistics. To me, it just makes common sense that if we're selling alcohol at a later hour, we're going to have more DUIs and we're going to have more deaths. I strongly oppose this bill. Thank, thank you for the debate, members. Seeing no additional discussion on the item, Mr. Santiago, you may close. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, and I want to thank the entire body for putting a, a robust uh, argument before us. But let's be very clear. This is a modest bill compared to what the legislature has passed before on this issue. Let me correct the facts. It's 3 a.m. It's no longer 4 a.m. It's 10 cities and it's a pilot program. And, and, and let's also be clear because it was mentioned that LA uh, passed a resolution against it. LA asked to be in it, or it would not be in it. The 10 cities who were in it re were requested to be in it. Yes, other things have happened, but we do have the letter. They requested to be in it. But let's also be clear. It was brought up, uh, conversations have been brought up about law enforcement. The CHP is neutral. So let's be very clear about that. No, they had a choice. They can submit a support letter. They can submit an opposition letter and they can make arguments like anybody else, but they're neutral. But we can argue about that and we can table that for a second. Let's also talk about the way the economy has changed. People have changed. If you go down into some of these neighborhoods, people get off at work at 10. People get off at 11. We're, not everybody gets up at six in the morning and not everybody's tucked in bed at nine at night. Let's be very clear. And in some of the neighborhoods that we represent, if you talk about Los Angeles, you talk about San Francisco, Sacramento, or some of these other areas, we're talking about the potential for convention centers. We're talking about people getting out at 10, 11 o'clock. We are not talking about folks running amok. Let's be very clear. And, it's, and it was said before, but I'll restate it. It's about pure local control. No one is going to force a municipality to do, do anything, even though it's been discussed already that there is a very robust uh, process to be able to get into the uh, in, into this pilot program. Law enforcement will be involved. ABC will be involved. And the local council will be involved. So it's not like you pass this bill and tomorrow morning, everybody's going to be drinking until three o'clock in the morning. That's not what this bill does. What this bill does is it says that local municipalities will have the ability where they deem responsible through a rigorous process that involves law enforcement through a rigorous process that involves ABC to decide for themselves. They could decide that it's potentially at venues where, where you have a hotel room. They could decide that it's only one day a year. They can decide that they don't do it at all, but they've requested the ability to make that decision for themselves. So let's be very clear about what this bill does. It gives pure local control with a strong framework and a, and a vigorous process to be able to get into this. That's all it does. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for an I vote. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Desire to vote. All members vote. Desire to vote.
Mr. Santiago. Moves the call. Members, I am prepared to lift the call on Senator Weiner's bill SB 58. The clerk will post. All members vote or desire to vote. Mr. Santiago moves a call, replaces a call. 58, clerk will post. Members, I am going to lift clerk the call will. again on SB 58. Clerk Close will post. Close a roll. Tally the vote, ayes 29, nos clerk 34. Will. That measure fails. Close a roll. Tally the vote, ayes 29, nos 34. That measure fails. Mr. Santiago notices reconsideration.